What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Darkest Dungeons where we will dive deeply into all kinds of random D-related words in order to kill the enemies that have decided to be our enemies for some reason. I don't know, maybe we're smelly, maybe we forgot to shower. Not really sure why these monsters are so grumped out by our presence, but one thing I do know is that they are grumped out. They have puked on me, they have spit on me, they have thrown wine on me, they have bitten me, they have cleaved me, they have slashed me. It's been very, very unpleasant. So Reynald was put in the sanitarium to get rid of his God-fearing tendency. Anytime that you have a quirk on a character that irks you, so if you got a quirk that irks you and you want to shirk it, my suggestion would be to get rid of any quirk first that limits the amount of places that you can get rid of stress. It's a big deal and it will change the outcome of your game. It's, it's a big, big problem when you have to only put somebody in for prayers and then this little asshole right here is using up the only slot in the transept. Now you could technically fix that by increasing the amount of slots, but that's expensive and that's kind of like the mid-games game, I guess. That's sort of like a tactic for the mid-game that you're not going to have access to in the early game. And so, honestly, I'd like to circumnavigate the issue altogether, and let's just, like, cure it right now. This guy can go wherever he wants. He can wander around and just be a pain, just freely. Be a be a free pain. It's kind of like a free agent, but with pain and suffering. And that means that we could take him out to drink or whatever. In our stagecoach, we need to get ourselves a couple more heroes, because I don't know if you noticed, but we're a little bit low on our roster right now. We've got a couple of barbarians that are looking pretty good. They're called Hellions, but I always call them barbarians. She's curious. That's not too terrible of a quirk. Anne's got... got... And Scott's got a couple of things that are really sort of like barking up the wrong tree. However, I think that if we stay on top of her like we did with Reynald, and I don't mean that in like a giggity sort of way. I mean that in a just like we need to keep an eye on her quirks and we need to make sure that we're constantly getting rid of those. Just throwing them straight out the back of the hatchback whenever we can. So I think if we could stay on top of it, we might be able to... I mean, that one right there isn't a concern at all because really, unless you're doing gold runs, Lagophobia shouldn't affect anything. Hylomania can be a little bit of a pain, but by and large, it means she's just going to try and loot chests and things before you get a chance to unlock them. So it is a pain, but it's not as bad as it could be. Like, Reynald has way, way, way worse quirks right now. Pico, what you got for me? He's got himself some decent abilities. It is going to cost us some money to get him into the skill set that I would prefer. Some people have told me that they prefer to run the double hexes. That's cool. Whatever whatever floats your boat. I like Demon's Pull. I like the heal. I like Abyssal Artillery. And then I tend to like one or the other of the debuffs. But if you want to run double debuffs and get rid of Abyssal Artillery, that's all good. I don't have any argument about that. I think that it's kind of just whatever you prefer. We'll not pray or flagellate for stress relief. If I couldn't flagellate for stress relief, I don't know what I would do. Probably seek a new avenue of employment. He's got Lagophobia and Off Guard. Off Guard's problematic. Although we could get rid of it. I do like having... How many... We have two of them right now. I'm trying to keep my party a little bit balanced at the moment. With the things that I like to play with. I think we'll go with Pico definitely. Even though... The abyss. One must know it. There we go. Interjection. Tell about you. Your characters. Wow, that was terrible grammar. Interjections. Tell you about your characters. There we go. I don't know. This is one of those weird days. I got woke up by a UPS man banging on my front door slash window. And so I think once you start a day off on that foot, the rest of the day is just not going to go according to plan. It already... I mean, honestly, it was my girlfriend's Valentine's Day present, so I basically scrambled. I've answered the door in my underwear. No joke. I was schlepificating. I was out. 100% unconscious, but I was like, no, Valentine's Day present, please don't go back to the warehouse. I'll be in so much trouble. No, I won't. I won't be in trouble, but she will be bummed out. And I don't like to see her bummed out. We've got Roger Neville. Eh. I guess I'll take Carden, I suppose. Barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. Unyielding's pretty good. And then the armor upgrade's pretty good as well. Yeah, I think she'll probably... She's got 77% death blow resist, which means that... Actually, we could turn her into a long-term survivor. She's good for, like, the hag, for example, which we might get to... I don't know. We'll see what the game does to us. Like, we might be fighting the hag sooner rather than later. I'm not sure. We'll find out here. Let's take a look, and it looks like... Actually, no, we got a bunch of easy quests in front of us. So let's go ahead and pan and scan through these. Because we actually have our choice at the moment of what we want to complete. That one's got the debuff stone. Why would I ever want to be debuff? I want my characters to be buff. I want them to look like the dudes from Spartacus where they're just like muscles. Just like muscles. That's it. They don't even have any other materials. Just like muscle. Let's see here. I'll probably go... I would like to hit up a medium. I mean, a medium is not a terrible plan for right now. We could do it in the ruins or we could do it in the wield. And it depends what we need, too. I mean, a medium adventure into the Warrens might be a little bit risky with a low-level group. 
The pigmen can be a little bit less forgiving than some of the other mobs. However, we do need portraits. Like, we're really low on portraits. We haven't spent a lot of our deeds or anything either. But honestly, I'm sort of like sitting on them. Up until the time where they become a tad more useful to me. Let's stick with... I don't know what our... Let me, let me, let me put together a group right here. And once I've put together a group, then we'll decide how we want to play this thing. Technically, I could bring Michelle, my bell. We could bring Pico, and we could just use him as a debuffer the entire time. That might work out okay. Although that will leave us a little bit wanting on DPS, but other people could fill that role a little bit more successfully. Technically, these guys didn't take that much stress, so I could bring kind of like my A-team, I suppose. The people that I could trust to get stuff done and try and get them up to like level 2 or whatever. Lagophobia, Hylomania, I think that I would rather... Yeah, let's go ahead and I would rather bring my stupid C star Didi, so we'll put that right there. And so now that we've got Sister Didi up and in the group, we could take Mamano. Mamano is an option. I'm thinking about getting rid of the stunning blow. By the way, if you're relying on like stun locking enemies and then healing yourself or stress relieving, I'm pretty sure that's not as intended as in the game. I'm pretty sure the developer's gonna remove it. Like there's a big stink on the forums about it right now. And I'm pretty sure it's going bye bye. So I'm gonna try not to like stun and heal spam or, you know. Stress spam. I suppose we could bring Viewpoint and just kind of like play around with him. We could backline him. I mean, it's not the worst idea ever. I suppose that I could go back on my word and try out a new character. How's that sound? Let's try a new character, but I got to get him some new abilities first. With his current skill set, I, I am not super stoked. So I want Inspiring Tune. We want Battle Ballad because Battle Ballad is the shiggity. And so if we can keep the Battle Ballad playing, be like... It's the battle ballet. Mm -mm 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 -mm. He could be like the usher of our group, I guess. We'll put viewpoint in the back. We'll take Machel as numero dos. We will then. I don't know if I want to bring Bassett along. I don't know. I've been kind of falling off the horse with the highwaymen lately. I've been finding that my, my runs are definitely more successful when I bring double melee DPS. It's not to say that he's bad, so I don't want to give that impression. Let's go with, yeah, Mama No, that seems pretty good. We may have a little bit of trouble healing, but I think it'll be alright. Let's take them out for a short run. We'll just go through a short run of the Warrens, and hopefully that'll be good enough. We're going to provision right now. I'm going to go 12 foodsies. No, not 13 foodsies. That is not divisible by 4 at all. We'll take 2 of you, 2 of you. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And then on torches, we'll just bring a stack. And so off we go. All right, welcome on back. We are in the Warrens, and actually, that's pretty sizable for a small dungeon, but I love the way that it's sort of like patched together. It's got like a Rubik's Cube minus one, or maybe like a Companion Cube. I really enjoyed that game. I was surprised how much I liked that game. Like, I played Portal the first time, and it was one of those games that, like, I hate puzzle games. Just as a human being, I'm not a big fan of puzzles because they make me feel dumb and I don't like to challenge myself. I'm being, we're going to be brutally honest right now, I'm just playing around. But anyways, I don't normally play puzzle games because they just don't agree with me. I Banging my head against puzzles makes me sad. And so, actually, we could try and do a darkness run right here. I would put him on the scrolls just in case. No, hideous portents. Why would there be hideous portents? I don't like good tents, let alone poor tents, so anyways, sleeping in a tent is actually a magical experience that I think everyone should go through for a long period of time, like several weeks of just sleeping on a floor, just to like get used to it. Yeah, let's go for a darkness run. Why not? Let's try and keep the darkness low, keep this thing nice and dangerous so that we can earn more loots. On this side, I'm gonna demon pull your ass to the front, so get on up. No, don't resist me. Why would you ever do that? I'm loving and I have gentle hands and I use lots of I use lots of hand cream. I'm I'm pleasant to be around. I carry Purell. Why? Come hang out with me. It's jam session time. Just get our heavy metal on right now. On this side, oh, does she have Iron Swan? Yes, Iron Swan him in the face. If we can't pull him to the front, then I am absolutely 100% okay with just, like, taking him out with brutal damage. As much painful and disgusting cuttery as- Ow. Oh, that was not very nice. Why would you crit me for 17 damage on the first battle of the dungeon? That's... It's not acceptable, amigo. Not acceptable. Now I gotta sit here and I gotta like spam heals and then I gotta hope that R and Jesus likes us, which obviously I think R and Jesus is probably on a break right now or eating some graham crackers or getting down on some I don't know what R and Jesus is up to, but definitely not being my amigo at the moment. Please don't crit. I would yeah, okay, good. I mean the three 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 thing oh, that's not good either. 
I don't like that because it means I can't heal without stacking up a whole bunch of pain. Ooh, Stabature! I love that ability. Great, great ability. Holy Lance is like, it's an OG, super awesome ability that you should be using if you haven't been using it. It's, it's pretty sweet. Like, I, I like using it. It's a fun ability. So while we wait, I'm gonna buff up her damage so that maybe we can like two-shot him on the next turn. And then from there, wow, he got first turn, that's rare. Alright, 12 damage away with our, I don't know, the sword seems to be large until you put it in the context, I guess it's almost as tall as he is. I suppose, ah, uh, another 3, I was hoping, I keep, we're fishing for 10s right now. We are fishing for dime pieces at the moment, and if we can't get one, then that's that. I do like Battle Ballad, I should have put his other ability on, did I even buy it? I don't know if I bought it, we may need it though, our stress is looking a little bit stressful. Oh. Yikes. I can see the way this is run is I can see the way that this run is going already. I really I don't know. I don't prefer the I don't like how crits dictate how this game goes. Like it's just not a gameplay style that I really think that I like. I, I would prefer that like choices in the battle determine how the battle goes. Not necessarily just like, eh, I rolled some dice and now you lose. Like it's just not something that I find to be conducive to like a satisfying gameplay experience because when crits dictate the flow of combat. It puts you in a weird position where, oh good, that one did 12, well that'll help out. RNG goes both ways, like I always say, it's just that, I don't know, I don't really think that crits should dictate the tempo of the game, it's just, it's not inherently fun. And as it stands right now, like, crits essentially determine the way that the game is going to go for you, and unfortunately, even though I said I wasn't going to do this, we're going to have to, because our characters are just too bashed up at the moment in order to make this work. I don't think I can change his stuff in combat, I think I have to wait till after combat in order to do it. I'd put an inspiring tune, but I'm an idiot and I forgot to put it in, so there it is. Either way, this should be stacked up pretty high on everybody right now. Yeah, plus 11 to accuracy and some other good stuff running around. Got a 4 right there. It's a little bit disappointing. Not what I was looking for. Not what I was looking for. We may just go for the kill right now, and we'll see if we can patch this up later in the dungeon. Either way, it's a very, very nasty damage, I mean, I'm sorry, a nasty fight that we got out of the way. We took some real serious damage, and that's the first fight of the dungeon. Like, that was the first one. Yeah. So, I suppose we could probably figure out how this whole thing's going to go. We got a little bit of cash right there. Luckily, it has been, given the damage that we've taken already, I think we are going to have to step away from that darkness run for just a second. Let me get him kitted up a little bit better. You want to keep Heroic in because it's a decent ability, just in case he gets pulled up to the front. Dirk Stab can be decent as well. I think I would rather keep him... Yikes, none of these are going to be getting used, so let's just go ahead and get rid of Slice Off. And we'll go ahead and give him Inspiring Tunes so that on the next fight, once he gets everybody all buffed up, we can start spamming on the Inspiring Tunes. Just like, hang in there. I know you got a boo-boo. And I know you took a giant scythe to the face. So please hang in there. It's just an Inspiring Tune. It's kind of like one of those old indie tunes that you hear, like, playing at the weird section in Best Buy. Somebody's always like, wow, we have taken a lot of stress for how close to the front of the dungeon we are. This could be... We're not having a good day. This day is not going to turn out the way that I thought. It's not going to be like one of those ice cube days where we get to sit in our Cadillac and just be like, mm, and like mean mug and everything just goes all right. This is one of those days where specifically things have gone wrong. He's still bleeding for some, oh, I wasn't paying attention. And so now he's bleeding again. He should have really, really good bleed resist. So I don't know why. Let me take a look here. Yeah. Please don't die. I would like the menu to close so that I can figure out what's going on. Yeah. So he's already maxed out. The narrator won't stop talking. I'm gonna have to keep him... Oh my god. Terrible vistas of emptiness reveal themselves. I... Yeah. This is a special run. This is gonna be a special run. He's definitely run around the back of the supermarket with a helmet. We got like some kind of weird chaos gate back here. We're gonna have to go back. This is actually, I don't think we're gonna complete this one. I can virtually assure you the completion of this run is looking very, very unlikely at the moment. You'll forgive me while my mouse wheel decides to like die and no longer function. I, we're gonna have to leave him where he is. Luckily, this guy over here tends to get pretty early combat jibs, so we may be able to dig this out properly, I hope, but eh. Spirits are lifted. And purpose is made clear. Shovel our way through some refuse, see if he can make anything. The scrawlings forever change the hero. Fool me once. Technically, technically, he should be better at reading that. I don't know what it gave to him right now. Automatonophobia. Yikes. We may have to ditch him, too. He's looking a little bit expensive to fix at this point. 
Looking a little bit expensive to fix. We may want to put him out to pasture. Let me click on that. Get ourselves another torch going. We only have to do 90% of the room, so... I mean, honestly, we may have gotten a really, really bad combat right in the beginning. I'm going to stay away from that for right now. Everybody's a little bit too... Ooh. Okay. Got ourselves a pleasurable situation right here. I guess I'll go for heroic end since we're already sort of like lined up to die anyways at this point. He took a two damage crit right there. This is definitely one of those RNG runs. Just non-stop crits from the peanut gallery the entire time. How much would you like to be crit? The game. And the amount that I would like to be crit is not very much. So yeah, I'd like to stay away from it actually. Because let's get him off death's door for the time being. She's going to get munched on. Luckily, she's going to resist, so that's okay. Should probably start coming up with some sort of cumulative plan to get him, like, back in the line somewhere. But for right now, I'm just going to go for an AoE since it's really all that I can lay forward. For him, he can't use that from... Oh, they don't have a backline character. That's unfortunate. So let's just go for the Zealous Accusation for right now and see if we can eliminate some of these guys. He's taken some damage, and he's probably... There is the chance that he might die in between rounds. I really don't want to give him a bleed for the time being to add insult to injury. Unfortunately, his bleed just stacked, so now he's going to take two damage per round. Yeah, it's possible that he might die on this run, and honestly, there's not much I can... It's okay. He's like a cheap character that I don't really care about anyways. Doesn't really fit into my play style to begin with, so let's see if we can just finish this. Two damage? That's, that's what you brought to the table, huh? I'm expecting a cornucopia, and you brought like sunflower seeds, and not even the flavored ones. Not even the flavored ones. Let's click on this right here. Yes, please. Got a little bit of food left. I think I can save his life by just spamming some food on him. No, that is not what I desire. You go back there. That's going to fix our line for the time being. And we'll try and get him patched up. That was a hell of a run for us, though. I mean... Wait, what did I walk past? Oh, I walked past one of those little, I don't know, if those human skins flayed upon sticks. Somebody who's doing some arts and crafts up in this area. Some lovely, lovely, societally damaging, absolutely psychopathic arts and crafts. Have you ever flayed skin and put it on sticks? I thought not. Neither have I. It seems like the sort of thing that would get you in trouble with the police. And first attack is out. Hook where it hurts. And indeed, it does hurt. It does hurt so very, very much. I could start with Inspiring Tuna, so I think that's what I'm going to do, at least to try and fix some of this damage in retrospect. If we keep catching crits, it's not really going to do much for us, so I should probably put my net down, but we'll do what we can here. We'll do what we can. Hopefully, power through sacrifice, indeed. Don't skip your turn. Oh, he killed himself. He committed suicide. All right. That's concerning. She got a good roll right there, and that's actually really rare, so you should be stoked when that happens. It's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, she could die on this turn anyways, so there's the well-timed crit from the AI as usual. So, it's weird how- you notice how they always crit when they need a crit? I don't know, it might be a perceptional bias, but I've noticed the game always crits when it needs a crit. Eh, I think it's a bias. I'm pretty sure it's a bias, but they always crit when they need a crit. I'm just gonna focus fire through this one. That's all that I can really do at this point. We don't even have any heals to throw around, so... What are you going to do? If we can finish off this room, we might... No, we're not going to get the 90%. We may have to bail on this one. Oh, two in a row! That's hella rare. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Two people in a row getting a good roll. Before this, I would say I've gone about 20 without anybody getting the good test. They almost always fail. Oh, there's a crit right there. I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's get that stress lowered. Let's get that stress lowered. So we can't do anything with that right there. I need to get him into a position in our line where he can start healing people, but for right now, we got a lot of people on death's door. And the way we're gonna fix that, why are you switching positions in the line? Stop that, go over there. All right, so now we're all comforting each other. People are petting each other lightly. I'm hoping this doesn't turn out as bad as I think it's going to turn out, turn out as badly as I think it's going to turn out. But you know what? When the run goes bad, so too does the grammar. We leave it by the wayside. And I'm, I don't have running away inside of me. I'm like Spartacus, I can't run away. It's just, I don't do it. It's a thing that I am incapable of. And so we're going straight into the dungeon right now. We're going to loot, and we are going to be successful. Hang in there, everybody. Do the dance 
of successful dungeons with me. That's all that I request for just a second. The dance of successful dungeons. And so now he's going to get bloodthirsty. Even better. Yeah, we're going to have to get rid of him after this run. He's got way too many red things. I keep clicking stuff and it's my fault. I will address that right now. It's totally my fault that he has all these weird quirks, but... Eh. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. We lived, everybody! Well, let's, let's hold our heads briefly for our friend who did not live. But the rest of us did. On the plus side, hey... At least we made it out. The twisting tunnels seem a little less impossible. Yeah, you know, your friend only died in there. The loot on that one was definitely something to be desired. Almost a little bit of a waste of a run. We gave up one of our good characters for bad loot and nothing really else. We got Wield Scrounger and we've got Slayer of Mankind. Good, 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 good. Why is she so angry at such a popular wrestling personality? I'm not sure, but she is. She bears a long-standing grudge against him. Let's go ahead and stand tight for a second. There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. All right. A crawling chaos. Yes, all of that. So we definitely have some stress relief to take care of right here. I think that actually they made their roles. We don't. We don't. I think we should probably check in over here for anybody that might be useful. Corsi, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? You've got a cool name, Corsi. Like, you know how there was always that kid? He was usually named Dominic. That was what that's what I was noticed when you were like in elementary school. There was always like that cool kid whose parents let him have a rat tail. His name was always Dominic. He always had a cool name like Dominic or I don't know. A name that you thought was cool when you were a little kid like Roy. And then like once you get older you're like, "Hmm. I don't know. Seemed a little redneckish at the time like Roy. <laughs> this kid, I knew a kid like I back in the day when I was in like 3rd grade, I thought that Roy was like the coolest. His parents let him have a rat tail and like an earring even though he was like 9 years old and he wore like a wife beater. In retrospect, I realized that he was just kind of like <laughs> He's just kind of like this little redneck kid. He might have been cool, I guess. We'll take Corsi cuz we need him. <laughs> an 8-year-old with an earring and a wife beater and a rat tail. Oh man. Some things from the early 90s you will never see again. I don't think rat tails are ever going to make a comeback. As a style, I don't think rat tails are ever going to be that thing that just like shows up on the scene again. We could bring... Oh, she's got good skills too. I wouldn't have to retune her much at all. Malbean, we could bring her. I mean, she's got a really good crit rate. If you're looking for somebody to just like crit a lot, she tends to be... I mean, the grave robber does it. The grave robber does it, if that's what you're into. I might recommend putting flashing daggers in there somewhere, or maybe pick to the face instead of toxin trickery. But toxin trickery could be good too, it just sort of depends. I kind of wish that we had an apothecary here, a plague doctor. I, I, we haven't been lucky, we've got Pippin over here who's got, oh she's got Yop. Get rid of anybody that doesn't have Yop. I mean, Yop is, actually she's good though, I don't want to get rid of her. She's turning out fairly well too. As is, well, Anne's got, we will have to spend a little bit of money to fix her. It might be worth it to swap her out with Pippin. She does have bad humor, though. And being a fan of the comedic arts, I think that I would prefer to keep somebody with a bad sense of humor out of my group. My roster is full, so I don't really know why I'm looking around to see who I can replace. I could probably get rid of one of these guys, too, or one of these ladies. I think that... Yeah, I think we could backline Rezai fairly easily without having to worry about it. Maybe get rid of her in favor of one of the classes we don't have. It's doable. I mean, I'm just playing around with stuff right now. Obviously, the game is not, like, winnable or beatable at the moment, so... I'm just playing with stuff so that we can try out new classes and things. I mean, I've played all of them. I want to point out I have, like, 30 hours of gameplay at this point. This game is, like, one of those weird itches that you just keep scratching even though it's, like, bleeding. And it just, it keeps hurting you and giving you a scar. But anyways, that's going to be our episode for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in this run where crits were really just sort of affecting our run in a negative sense critically. I will see you all later. we got to conserve money for a little bit and try and recover because our cash flow is definitely a little bit on the precarious edge. We're not bottomed out yet, but a few poor decisions right now could lead to that taking place. I'll see you on the next episode. How you do, everybody?